In this video, we're going to be looking at ServiceNow flows and specifically the lookup records actions and how to find um, actions with certain conditions or flows that contain lookup record actions that contain certain conditions. So a bit of warning that this is a very obscure, uh, there, there's very little actual use for this. It's just really a really edge case. I had to do it the other day. Uh, so I figured I'd make a video on it uh, so that uh, if I have to do it again, I can remember uh, what I did. And this might be useful to somebody out there. So let's say I have a bunch of flows and those flows contain uh, lookup records actions. So I have one example here. This is a lookup incidents flow. This has a uh, lookup incidents records, uh, a lookup records action. And the action looks up every record in the incident table that is a subcategory of CPU. And then I have another one. Uh, this is the same kind of thing, but it's a scheduled flow. It has a lookup records action, and that looks up all incidents with a subcategory of email. So now let's say uh, I'm going to do something with the subcategory column, um, and I want to go find all the flows that have lookup records actions that reference the subcategory column. Uh, there's no, as far as I know, there's no easy way to do that. Uh, if I go into here, right, there's no like search feature. You can't uh, look up the actions, no easy way to do it. So we're going to be going through some of the tables behind Flow Designer or uh, uh, Flow, I guess, uh, to figure out how we can do that. So the first table we're going to look at is syshub action instance. Go over here, syshub action instance dot list. And I'll put the table names in the description for uh, easy reference. Uh, so this is a list of every action in every flow. This is the, the actual instances of the actions in every flow. So we can see we're looking at that there's an action type column and we're looking for the lookup records action. So we're going to just do show matching on that. So here we have 46. Uh, so there are flows with 46 of these uh, lookup records actions. Um, so now we're going to, let's take a look at one of these. So lookup incidents, here's uh, one of the flows we were just looking at. And if I go into the preview of the record, I can see that the conditions column is in there, right? Subcategory equals CPU. Okay, great. So as I was doing this, then I thought, well, let me just uh, choose the conditions column and I'll search on that. But uh, it is nowhere to be found. So the conditions column is not actually in this table. It's in another table. Let's open up the record here on lookup incidents. Okay, so this brings me to the record, and actually, because the conditions field here is um, is read write is is writable, uh, it doesn't show. The, actually, I'm not 100% sure why it doesn't show the thing. I, I think it's a combination because it's writable and because it's coming from another table. So let's go into the XML, figure out, try and figure out where those conditions are coming from. Um, so it's not in any of the columns here, syshub action instance. But if we go here to sys uh, variable value, we can see, and if we keep scrolling down, this is really small. Sorry about that. Let me try and crank that up a little bit. So uh, somewhere in here, right here. So here's our, our value, right? We see our our condition right here, subcategory equals CPU. So that's a value column on the sys variable value table. Okay, let's head over to there. Whoops, I thought I copied that. So this table is called sys underscore variable underscore value. Okay, here we are over here. So this table has um, 26,000 records, that's quite a few. And we can see that there's a, there's a value column. So let's just uh, break this down by 
there's a table column and an ID column. So let's look for everything with table syshub action instance. Okay, that's pretty good. And then there are different variables. Uh, so there's a table variable, which seems to have a table name. Uh, there's a table name variable, which also has a table name. Uh, let's do a group by. Okay, so we can see there are a few actually uh, conditions. Right, these must be different uh, variable types. And so this is starting to look normal. This is starting to look like what we're looking for here. So here's these, these have uh, encoded queries in here, and this is what we're trying to find. So let's ungroup it. And let's look for everything with the value of subcategory. And actually, let's do a star because it could be somewhere hidden. Subcategory. Okay, there we go. So now we have, uh, what, what do we have? Six records here? Six records. Subcategory equals email. So these uh, likely point to the action instance records, which then has the flow, so we can go back and figure out what those are. So one way to do this is to just do this manually because you you know you probably like I said in the beginning of this video you probably don't have to do this very often. Um, so you would just want to fire up a uh, probably another browser tab. So let's grab the sys ID out of here. Um, let's see. I think that's going to copy the sys ID for the record. Uh, but yeah, actually we can just open this in a new tab. Action instance, okay, and here I so this brings us back to the action instance record, and if we go to the if we do the show XML, this will show us what flow this belongs to, right? So the lookup incidents scheduled flow that would be one of them. Um, if we go back here and uh, maybe we'll go to the next one. This one that'll open in a new browser tab. We do this do the same thing. All right, look up this, show XML, and we look at the flow column. And okay, this is the lookup incident. So that's the second flow we were looking for. Um, so if you, if you don't have a lot of records, that's probably the easy way to go. Uh, if you have a lot of these things, or you for some reason are doing this on a regular basis, you can create a database view to figure this out. So uh, I've created one already. Let's go to database views and just have this one called, and it's given me this error. I'm not sure why that is. Uh, this just started when I created these, so something's off with that. Uh, we just give it a name and we just put these two columns to these two tables together, right? Sys variable value and sys hub action instance. And then on the uh, variable value, we just link it up, right? Whatever is the document key on the variable value is the same as the sys ID uh, matches up with the sys ID on the action instances table. So if we fire this up and take a look at this, now I get uh, both tables in one, and I can search on the value column again, subcategory. Whoops, we did star subcategory. Subcategory. And again, we got six records. And now we have the flow, uh, the flows right in here. Uh, so now there's an additional challenge, actually. If uh, So you see some of these have multiple uh, multiple flows. Uh, so all of these point to, and, and this is probably a subject for another video, uh, but the flows have snapshots. Each flow has snapshots. So every time you uh, do a new version, I think, of a flow, it gives you a new snapshot of that flow. Um, so if we 
let's uh, I, I don't want to go too deep into this because this is really for another video but uh, basically you're gonna find the name you can go it's gonna bring you to the and let's click over to it to the uh, syshub flow base um, actually I think it's gonna point me right into here yeah sorry about that uh, so in Washington DC because there's now Workflow Studio, the links to flows don't work anymore because they're all supposed to open in Flow Designer, uh, and that seems to be broken in Washington D.C. It, or it, the redirect to Workflow uh, to uh, work uh, what the heck they call that thing, Workflow Studio doesn't work anymore. Um, so let's just go over to there, and I'm I'm, pro I'm going down a rabbit hole here. Basically, if you have this view, you look at this, you look at the names, and then you can figure out, okay, well, I know this is appearing a few times, but I can figure out that uh, which, which ones they're going to. Uh, let's just head over very briefly to that table, syshub flow base, syshub flow base dot list, and we'll look up like the lookup incidents flow just so we can see why there are multiple ones so um, say we have lookup incidents a few times Not quite sure yeah that is gonna work okay so lookup incidents we have it twice and you can see on this table there is a column called uh, uh, not flow type uh, whether it's a snapshot or not, I forgot which column that is. Uh, here we go. See, there's a class call, right? Class. Oh, and this is actually the table that it points to because I think this is kind of like a a view or some sort of join between two tables uh, because these records are actually in. So it's the flow that we're actually looking for, right? The flow. If you do a record preview and you look at the URL, you can't see it, it's sort of on the bottom. This takes you to the syshub flow table, which is really the, uh, which is the main table for the flows. On the other hand, if you look at uh, this record, which is a snapshot record, this is gonna take you to syshub flow underscore snapshot, uh, which is like a saved uh, version kind of, of, that, uh, of that flow. So anyway, that's the reason why they appear more than once, but really you probably just end up uh, you know finding the name and then going into flow designer or workflow studio and then going and doing what you have to do uh, in our case we we're looking for subcategories so we might go and change the column it points to or or whatever it is uh, so that is a um, sort of an extended look under the hood of flow designer in order to find uh, lookup record actions uh, with certain conditions uh, to go find that so thank you very much for watching.